Hi, hi, I'm with Ross Rice, author of OET Skills Builder from Express Publishing and a freelance uh, teacher and course book writer specializing in medical English, as well as being a trustee of IATEFL. So plenty to keep you busy there, um, yep. Ross. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you about um, how your overall approach uh, in this past year and um, how that has affected the work you've been doing for, for teachers. Yeah, well, at Express Publishing, um, we we launched um, um, the OET Skills Builder that you mentioned um, a couple of years ago now, um, or maybe maybe about a year ago, and um, and really that was in response to um, the, the the demand from trainers and students for the OET. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with OET. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I am. I know that it, it, it is being offered in, in Ireland. And, um, uh, but tell me more about it, because I, I, I think it's, it's useful for people to have just a brief introduction. Sure, sure. Yeah. So OET is um, the Occupational English Test, and it's a test of um, English communication skills, but in a healthcare setting. Um, so, you know, sort of that there, there are um, four papers, so not dissimilar from other, other tests that people know, but that's kind of where the similarity ends um, if you're comparing with IELTS or, or, or TOEFL or whatever. Um, as I say, everything's set in a healthcare setting, and um, the idea is, is that you um, test healthcare professionals in 12 different um, areas of healthcare. So that could be nursing, medicine, obviously, but also dentistry, podiatry, and my favorite, which is veterinary surgery, which I would love to get into myself. I've not had the chance yet, but I will, hopefully. Um, and as I say, four papers. Um, I specialized in my particular book. So our course has two books, and, and I specialized in the writing and speaking sections of the test. And uh, my colleague, Tom, uh, Fasnij wrote the other book in the series which deals with the writing and listening so writing and listening in, in in format is similar to IELTS in the same you know in the similar sort of style of questions but as I say everything is in a healthcare setting um, and then um, with um, with the writing and speaking it's very much orientated towards the specific needs of a particular healthcare professional so um, the, the 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 test for nurses for example you'd have a role play was specific for um, nurses um, and same with the writing with well, the writing is generally a letter um, as opposed to something quite random that you might get in, um, in in the IELTS for example so it might be a letter of discharge for example um, or a letter of transfer transferring a patient from one healthcare setting to another healthcare setting um, and, and, and that's sort of in general what the what the OET is about. Um, and as I say, so, you know, in response to the needs of trainers, um, this is what um, Express Publishing um, set about a couple of years ago. And then the book was launched, as I say, last year. Um, and obviously, healthcare has been at the forefront of, of everybody's mind in the last year, the last two years or so. So it's very pertinent, in fact, um, especially with, you know, with the need to hire increased increasingly more and more nurses, whether that be in the UK or in Ireland, um, in particular nurses, but also doctors as well, where both countries are heavily reliant on overseas um, healthcare professionals. Um, and, um, and, and so, you know, hospitals are continuously hiring from um, abroad, but they need to obviously be sure that those nurses, those doctors that they're hiring do have the level of English necessary um, in order to um, in order to, to, to take them on board. And um, OET is a, is a test that is recognized by, and I'm just going to check my notes here, by the Ireland, by Ireland's Medical Council, yeah, so that's for doctors, and the Nursing and Medwifery Board of Ireland. Okay, so so that's um, and that's 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 the relevance of uh, of, of the course book, um, of course books rather. There's two of them. So yeah, yeah. No, I, th I think it's really important to have, uh, especially in those professions, uh, to be uh, checking somebody's English on a uh, in a practical um, context, uh, as, oppo as opposed to the kind of very generic context that that they would get in other in other exams. 
Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's all about patient, not only about the patient and their um, and, and their, 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 their diagnosis, their prognosis, their, their, their recovery, um, but it's also about patient safety as well. So it's ensuring that um, not only is there a good um, um, nurse um, patient, a doctor patient rapport, um, and to take them through that patient journey, that patient experience, but it's also ensuring that that it's done in a safe um, manner um, and, and communication skills are, are vital to that. Uh, and so are there any kind of specific things that you would point to in the way that it's organized or put together to help teachers and schools kind of uh, prepare the uh, candidates uh, adequately? Yeah, yeah, of course. So the course books themselves um, in within, you know, within the, the, the skills builder series are actually the only ones that exist for the moment. Um, well, I said, no, I, I am lying. No, there, there is another one, but I can't mention it because it's a different publisher. <laughs> um, but there are very few actual course books that you can use in the classroom. There's a lot of self-study um, materials available, but not much that the teachers can go in and use in the classroom, whether that be online or, or, or face-to-face. And, and so that's where our premise started, in fact, as opposed to just offering, um, you know, sort of uh, um, tests that people can take. We really wanted to... Um, help teachers train their, their candidates um, by you know by producing course books and so that was our, that was our premise that was our starting block um, but obviously we realize as well that there's an awful lot of teachers and trainers out there who have never worked in medical English who've never worked with healthcare professionals and are not really sure how to go about it so um, if teachers are interested they can go onto the express website and there is um, what we call teachers corner where they can go on and um, and find out more about the courses but also there's a little video for each of the two um, course books to explain not only the book but also the kind of rationale behind um, what the test is is testing um, so for example the the the, the concept of um, a patient patient centered care is really key to understanding the role play and the criteria by which the students are um, tested against so if you haven't understood what patient centered care is then it's difficult for you then to train your candidates in order to be successful in the role play so in the little videos we give um, trainers some tips and hints and we try to explain um, about the different criteria um, against which um, their students will be marked. So if that's in the reading or the listening skills, or in, in, in my case, in the reading and the speaking skills. Um, so there's that. So there's the course books, there's um, the, uh, the little videos. And we also, um, have the, the course books are also now um, recreated as digibooks. The only problem is that I'm not an expert in digibooks, so how that actually works, um, people will have to go onto the website and find out. <laughs> so, yeah, the, 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 there's a lot of um, uh, move towards kind of giving a digital option uh, exactly. in, in, in course books, so I'm sure people will will, will be familiar with the uh, with the. I'm sure, yeah. people. I'm sure anybody <laughs> watching is more familiar with that than I am. So <laughs> yeah, but obviously with the move towards you know. Um, increasingly more and more you know delivery of uh, of, of courses online um, mm -hmm. and also if you're you know if you're working with with students internationally you know I work with a lot of um, international doctors who before they arrive in the in um, what well, in my case in the UK but um, or it could be an island so um, you know the need to be able to to deliver courses online is is just yeah <laughs> how do the candidates um feel about the process of uh, um, training to to do this the OET and uh, and then actually doing it do they find it a satisfying experience do they enjoy it if you can say that about an exam <laughs> well actually actually they 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 some of them do enjoy it I think I get the impression um, but they, they they generally find it very beneficial because it's um, it, it's totally related to their field so as opposed to being sort of random as we mentioned earlier with something like IELTS where you could be asked any number of questions and it's very it, it, it's difficult to prepare yourself for for the content whereas with um, OET they already know the content um, and and you know we have to remind them sometimes that it is a test of English and not a test of their clinical 
skills. Um, and that is that is slightly different. Um, and I know some some trainers struggle a little bit with that, um, but sort of insisting that it, it is a test of English. It, and um, and so you do have to train your students um, to accept that for the beginning at the beginning as a concept and then um, and, and then especially for the writing and speaking to actually give them strategies necessary to to overcome that in a way it, it's um, it, it, it's a little bit different from from other tests but it does prepare them for the workplace so if they're coming to work in Ireland for example it really will um, prepare them in terms of the types of um, documents that they'll be coming um, that we, they'll need to be familiar with um, the approach as I said earlier in terms of the the, the, the patient-centered approach which is not something that is um, um, necessarily known throughout the world um, before there would be a, um, a, a more traditional approach in used in, in in Ireland for example where the the doctor is much more dominant in the role and the, and the patient is very passive um, and and that that sort of traditional model is sometimes used still in other countries so they need to be prepared for the workplace as and, and at the same time um, do do well in the test um, and so it's a sort of a dual purpose so it really is pure ESP it, as a test it really is English for specific purposes um, and 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 and, and, and preparing them for, for the workplace as well. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so the skills, uh, the skills that we're, we're talking about are professional skills uh, as much as they are um, English language skills. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it, it's essentially um, professional skills. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of things involved in, um, especially in the um, in the OET speaking, that help us in daily life as well, because um, you're going to be, uh, well, the candidates are going to be judged on various aspects of their communication skills, so empathy, reassurance, um, and, 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 and this kind of thing, which are actually useful in, in daily life as well. Um, so how, how to express empathy, how to demonstrate that you're reassuring and that you're using active listening skills. And, and those, are, those are skills that are also useful and transferable into daily life as well. Yeah, absolutely. I like the sound of it. Um, <laughs> so uh, for more information, uh, you mentioned the website a couple of times. Can you spell out the website for me there? What is the, which websites are you, are you directing us towards or where should we look? Yes, it's the um, general website for Express Publishing, so www.expresspublishing.co.uk. Okay, great. Um, and so my uh, final question uh, is, because uh, uh, we're, we're doing this in the context of the ELT Ireland annual conference this, uh, this February, which uh, we're glad to see back in person uh, again. Mm. Uh, why do uh, Express Publishing support the ELT conference every year? Well, I, I think, you know, um, my understanding is that, you know, this is one of the major, if not the major um, conference in Ireland and, um, and Express Publishing really feel that being part of this is, is, um, is very key to um, obviously to their um, from, from their side as a, as a, as a publisher, but a, really a means of meeting um, trainers and, um, and giving, having the chance to exchange with them, find out their needs, try and respond to, to, to their needs as far as, as, far as possible and, and, and really reaching out to, to trainers. Um, and I think, you know, this is, this is a fantastic opportunity and, and obviously being face to face for the first time in a couple of years, um, um, you know, Express is publishing is, is really keen to participate in any way that it can. That's great. And we look forward to seeing them there. Um, thanks very much for your time today, uh, Roz. That was great no to problem. hear all about the, um, the OET Skills Builder and uh, what you've been working on. Thank you very much. My pleasure.